Hey, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. Uh, late crowd so far, but we can give it a minute. Yeah. Joining us from the holodeck today, are you? For those who are wondering what the hell I'm talking about in the recording, Trishank has an interesting background today. Right, yes. <laughs> I'll give it another minute or two before we formally kick off. Um, Okay, I just realized that the recording now has a bunch of me typing, always good fun. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. I hope you're all well. Um, traditionally, uh, we ask folks to add themselves to the notes. Where's the chat so I can drop the link? Um, just basically so that we remember who was where and when, uh, because certainly I'm not very good at that. Um, the other thing we'd like to do is to kick off with new faces. And I see some folks who might be new if, if they would like to introduce themselves. Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Jeremiah. Um, I am working uh, at Anaconda right now, and I'm working on uh, some of our security tooling uh, focused around SBOMs and CVEs. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to sort of pop in and learn a little bit more about contributing and and just sort of be at least a fly on the wall for the first uh, little bit and learn where I can help. Welcome. Anyone else like to introduce themselves? Okay. Oh, uh, Andrew, if you're talking, you've got your mute on, I think. Or at least I can't hear you. Still, still hearing horrifying silence. All right, we might press on, and Andrew, if you get a chance when we come back, uh, we can come back to you. Um, okay, so the first item on the agenda is from Dustin, who sends his apologies. He couldn't be here today. Uh, he's drawn our attention to some work being done on the CELSA release candidate um, in CELSA it basically says that you need to distribute provenance information in order to qualify for level three. I think it's been a while since I looked at it. Um, the provenance format and what the exact requirements are are now sort of being discussed. There's a link there. Please take a look when you get a chance. Um, I looked through the release candidate one of Salsa and there were sort of like a few to do's in that draft. Uh, so I think this is one of the big ones that needs to be worked out, um, particularly of interest because I think as different ecosystems evolve, we will eventually all get around to the business of providing provenance when it is possible to do so. Um, and by that, I mean, uh, essentially, you know, documentation that shows how the thing was built or where it was built or who built it and that sort of thing. Are there any questions or discussion people wanted to raise about that topic. I'll 
I'll take silence as a no, uh, which leads us elegantly to the second one, uh, which is a packaging con. Now, I don't have a link there because I only just saw it about 10 minutes ago on Twitter. Uh, but packaging con ran, I want to say last year, uh, and was attended by a lot of folks. I think it's relevant to this group, and I would encourage folks to submit papers for it. It's going to be in Berlin. I can't remember when, again, 10 minutes ago. Um, but I think it's it's October. definitely, beg your pardon? It'll be in October. October. Oh, that's good. That gives me lots of time to uh, haggle with the budget. Um, yeah, so that will be in October in Berlin. Uh, I think it would be a great opportunity for folks to talk about what they're up to in their ecosystems. Uh, and also it might be an opportunity for us to talk about this group generally as a, as a venue for folks to talk more frequently than once a year. Um, this might be a record-breaking short session unless anybody has something really controversial that needs to be discussed in the section I haven't added yet. Any other business? Well, it would help if I put my cursor down. I think I've successfully turned my microphone on, if that helps. Oh, yeah. Another Australian. Wonderful. G'day. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Andrew. I'm from, from uh, the Google Open Source Security team. I'm working on OSV, um, predominantly doing... Um, CVE conversion work, trying to get some CVEs into OSV. Uh, and I figure if uh, us APAC people don't show up at these APAC friendly meetings, then they'll probably stop happening. So I thought I'd just yeah. pop in and say hi. Yeah, I, I worry about that myself, talking of timing. Like we, we tend to have thinner attendance for the APAC time. I think a lot of folks who are in Europe obviously can't do it. And in the US, at least on the East Coast, it's, it's after hours. Yeah. Um, so I, I do want to keep doing them because as far as I can tell about half of ghost is Australian. Um, it feels that chunk. way sometimes. Yeah. These days it's a good chunk in Sydney. Yeah. I'm in Brisbane. But, um, yeah. Well, you can be forgiven for living in Brisbane. I'd rather live in Brisbane than Sydney. That's a bit of inside talk for, for our friends here. They like saving differences is annoying. Is the <laughs> yes. Well, uh, we, we're all learning about daylight savings because it's the two weeks during which uh, America advances daylight saving and Europe doesn't. Yes. Um, okay. So that's why it's a blast as well. Uh, was there any other business that folks wanted to discuss? I see, uh, Trishank, that you have your hand up. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I just wanted to add a comment to um, um, Dustin's, Dustin's PR, and I'm not sure whether I'm looking at the right spec version. Probably not. I'm not sure. But one thing that's not clear to me right here, and maybe it's worth sharing my screen. Maybe someone can help 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 answer this. But one thing I didn't see, where is the thing? Where is the PR when you actually need it? Um, but when I reviewed the PR earlier, so let me pull it up. I think it is here. There we go. Right. I think when I reviewed the PR earlier, and I'm not sure whether I'm looking at the same page here. Um, but what's not clear to me right now is exactly how you would verify these attestations. Maybe it's supposed to be deliberately weak right now for 1.0, but that's that's something that I don't see too much details on. Do I make sense? Like, for example, how do you know which keys to use for um, each of the attestations? So GitHub might be using one, GitLab might be using another one. Is the assumption that this is baked into the tooling for now or... Um, what am I missing here? I wish I had an answer for you. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at this one myself. Yeah, so this is this is right. Okay. Well, anyway, I raised the question for what it's worth in in the PR, and we'll see where where it goes from there. Yeah, yeah my think my thinking on this issue, Trishank, is that um, it's deliberately not prescriptive there uh, because the the sort of um, requirements are going to differ a lot based on how you're actually deploying this. Um, so you could imagine, like, I, I like to borrow Jacques um, very meaningfully just dis, um, distinguishes between like software signing in general and like authorial attestations are what, what really we want from that. And then the build provenance attestations are, are a separate class of things. Uh, and these are going to be signed by separate parties. Uh, right. And, and so um, I think you have in your head tree shank and, and a bunch of the folks in this room have been like playing with this ideal kind of um, 
supply chain that's that's got these attestations as one component. Um, you fetch the policy that you use to verify the attestations, uh, which is going to be like an in toto layout um, from something like Tough, uh, right? To make sure you're getting those policies securely. Like, like, so there's like kind of an end goal, dream, ideal state that that we have in mind. Um, but I don't think we want to um, hold up, you know, kind of like nailing down some of the formats until um, we are we are much closer. Or while we don't want to wait for that end goal, right? Oh, to, sure. to kind of nail down the format, right? Like you get you get very like um, cyclic dependencies. I think is the worry. So that's. That's um, not knowing a ton about the background of the publication of this specific document, because um, I haven't been involved in this also discussion, but that would be my hunch is basically just that like there is no one size fits all answer to that question. To prescribe it would require us to spec out like this ideal system, um, which would require a lot of work and maybe not even be a good fit for every package you use. So, so that's, that's kind of my theory there. Exactly. No, I guess I guess this is something that I need to bring up to the um salsa. But but you know, agreed. Yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't hold up salsa, which I think is deliberately focused on the build track now for this reason, right? Um so what what I'm slightly worried is about is about the accidental uh, what's what's the word for it? Bifurcation of verification standard, you know, the, the, but I guess we will figure this out all organically. Is there a particular bifurcation that you foresee or or are worried about? I'm, I'm sort of curious about this because I this is this is new to me. Oh, uh, I think I think it could very easily happen accidentally, right? Um, that people will come up with their own standards for, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. It's just that you you're gonna need to write different tooling for different ecosystems. Maybe that's not a bad thing. I'm just worried about how this will all actually play out in practice. Yeah, I think I think um, this is this effort is meant to sort of try to um, limit the extent to which that happens, right? I think it was inspired in part by uh, NPM's build provenance, uh, which is which is sort of coming out. Um, right. And I think in the near term, it's very much going to be every you know package manager for themselves in terms of writing a verifier and and writing verification policy. Um, the hope is that, you know, once we have a couple of examples, um, first that the everyone who's early in creating those examples is talking to each other so we can reuse, again, like, like provenance formats. So that's exactly what's going on here. Um, and then, you know, sort of as, as we see these used in a couple of different cases, um, you know, we can we can sort of generalize and, and zoom out and, and try to, you know, again, run the verification code, not directly in, um, you know, NPM's implementation, but rather NPM just shells out to in toto or, or something like that, um, you know, but, but like basically the, the verification policy hopefully becomes uh, language agnostic. Um, but I think I think we can start with it, you know, where where it is for now, with like special casing in each package manager, um, and then hopefully, um, you know, as as the the sort of like each component gets standardized in a way that meets all the needs, we can we can then replace the the ad hoc implementations with, um, you know, with shared ones. And I think again, by by the formats are what are going to really be killer there. If there is, you know, like that's where bifurcation is is deadly. You know, bifurcation and implementations is is less worrisome to me because we can converge, we can we can sort of make make them compatible and and replace, you know, kind of the the specific implementation with a with a general one. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, I guess I would say, but I, I think you're right to bring bring it up as a as a concern and something we should we should be keeping an eye on, and, and hopefully. That's part of the role of this group, uh, right? Is to just uh, monitor, you know, and if it seems like someone's gonna go build something that's fundamentally incompatible with everything else and isn't leading to this, you know, unified vision. And obviously we don't wanna impose a, this unified vision on anyone, but we do wanna, 
be able to leverage common tooling and and only do things once where we where we don't have to. No, I think I think that's a great summary. Thanks. So so my rough understanding is it seems to be that we're deliberately saying let's let's start let's iterate right. We're starting with the build track, so we got build provenance attestations, and then probably we start adding source. Uh, source track attestations, I wouldn't be surprised. And eventually, package registries will have their own kind of attestations. I guess eventually we'll have uh, an in total policy to piece all of this together. That's a missing part of the picture, too. Yes, exactly. And and my my hope is that perhaps um, perhaps in Toto is where it's sort of the drive for for unifying all of this can come from because in Toto is is the the sort of piece that lets you specify, you know, my package is secure if it was signed by Trishank and it's got a build attestation from one of these small number of of trusted build services, um, and and that's that part if in toto understands the the attestation format that we're using right then i think we're in actually quite good shape um you know i, th I think i think in toto is like a really great place to, to sort of generalize and, and push it sort of you know raises the question of how do you get the policy for any individual package for you know how do you get that in total layout and again i think that's where where the in total folks have been um, talking to the um, uh, tough folks, um, and and that's that that seam right now. I think isn't incredibly smooth, but like there there's work in progress on how how that interaction is going to go. Cool. Yeah. No. No. Thanks for the summary. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. No. And again, I don't I don't want to be uh, you know sort of blithely optimistic. Uh, I I think uh, you know you're you're right to. This is something we got to keep an eye on and, and left unchecked, you know, uh, open source uh, ecosystems are going to do what they do best, which is come up with a million incompatible solutions um, to, you know, which which I think is is especially problematic in a security context. So I'm, I'm glad you're bringing it up. And it is something I think a lot about. It sounds like it's something that um, you think a lot about, too, and a lot of other folks on this call. So um, let's keep having this discussion, I, th I think. But but I, I do see a path forward. Oh, that's an interesting discussion. Um, definitely speaking for myself, avoiding unnecessary proliferation through mutual persuasion was was one of the things that I sort of thought we could achieve in this group and why I helped set it up. Um, still, any other business that folks have or should we uh, wrap up early and go our separate ways and have our morning coffee or our dinner as the case may be going once going twice sold to the man with the blue hat okay everybody uh we will see you next time at the emir friendly time that is uh 10 i think a.m eastern time i can't remember what it is utc and i wouldn't even try to guess at the moment um as usual it will be on the calendar uh, I've written some notes, uh, Trishank and Zach, uh, how I thought your conversation went. Please check to see that I didn't misquote you or, you know, create legal obligations that you'll regret for the rest of your life, that sort of thing. <laughs> legal obligations. Okay, now I have to go read it. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I hope you have a great day, evening, uh, or afternoon, as the case may be, and we will see you next time. Thanks very much. Ciao. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.